Hello and welcome back to our discussion about input-output devices. We have introduced polling as one way to work with input-output devices, but it is generally inefficient, especially with those that have a lot of data to transmit or receive. It is a, a, a valid technique and I certainly have used it in the past myself. Um, particularly when doing some prototyping, when, for example, I have a Raspberry Pi and would like to um, figure out if some new I.O. device is working properly. Uh, the, the easiest thing that we can do is to set up a very short polling loop and see uh, what does the device do. More commonly, the way how we are going to work with I.O. devices is through a known mechanism of interrupts. So, we have already highlighted that polling waste processor resources. Why? Well, simply because whether the input-output device has something to tell us um, or not, we anyways go to it and check how is it, is it doing. If it has no data for us, we still spend processor cycles to go poll it. And there is an analogy in real life, you know, when we throw a party, um, this would polling would be equivalent to setting a timer and going to the front door every minute to check if somebody has arrived. We don't do that because people long time ago have invented a doorbell to exactly prevent us from doing that. So when the guests arrive, they ring the doorbell to announce themselves. Similarly, an IO device rings their doorbell that when they have something to tell us. Um, their doorbell is the interrupt. So they will raise an interrupt or throw an interrupt whenever they have some data to deliver us or perhaps if there is some, some event that they would like to tell us about. Um, so the interrupt uh, will interrupt the current program and then we will transfer the control to the trap handler in the operating system that will handle that interrupt. Um, why interrupts are better than polling? Because when nothing is happening, uh, no, no news from the I.O. device, there is nothing to do. Our regular program continues. If, there, if the device is not producing a lot of data and doesn't have a lot of activity, it's great because we just periodically uh, will receive these, these interrupts and handle them accordingly. But if the device has a lot of I.O., um, interrupts are expensive because they interrupt the current programs, trash the caches, uh, tra trash the TLBs, and we have to go save the, straight, uh, save the state, restore the state, and then you know, warm up caches, and so on. So they're not the best thing to do. Generally, um, they are fine for low rate devices and they're preferred to polling. So mice, keyboard and so on uh, will use interrupts. Um, the in devices that produce a lot of data, a more common way is that they will initiate the data transfer with an interrupt when they have something to send us, receive the packet over Wi-Fi. But the transfers are generally, if there is a lot of data to be transferred, it is done by using a different mechanism, um, so-called direct memory access or DMA, which we'll cover in the next section. Before we get to the next section, there is an older way of essentially orchestrated polling, which, is, which was known as programmed I.O. Um, or P.O. This was introduced with older ATA style hard drives. Probably you do not have an ATA star, uh, uh, kind of a hard drive where essentially it was the role of a processor that to, um, to initiate all the data movement to and from the hard drive. It was done in a more efficient uh, way than just using loads and stores, but loads and stores initiated that. Um, so the CPU was typically spending some number of its cycles uh, to get the data to and uh, uh, from the disk and into the main memory. But that was the same CPU that was um, uh, being used to do the main computation. So 
handling the disk was an overhead. Um, typically, what would go to programmed I.O. were about 5% of processor cycles. So, um, these kind of things happen still. There are still instructions in uh, big processors that are being dealt, that, that are being used to copy a piece of data from one location to another. For example, if you look at Google's uh, workload, they report that about 5% of CPU cycles go to instructions like mem copy, which copies from one memory location to another. We are going to see some other methods, like the DMA access, just after the break, and we'll use them whenever we can, when we have a lot of data to move around. See you after a quick break. <laughs>